वेलकम 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 दिस इज चैनल वे यू लर्न साइंस विद मिस्टर नाइट नो टूडेज टॉपिक is about the characteristics of living things and we are going to fly into these characteristics and we're going to look at seven the seven basic characteristics of living things the the character the characteristics or the or the features of of living things that make them living and separate us from the non-living because once you do not have these characteristics all of them the entire grouping then you are considered non living so example virus for example may have a certain number of these characteristics but do not have the entire grouping hence they are classified as non living so let's fly right in now Firstly before I move on to this the first thing I want you to remember is Mr Grinny Now Mr Grinny going to be your friend through this lesson We're going to learn about Mr Grinny Now the use of Mr Grinny is to help us to remember these seven characteristic M is for movement R is for re respiration G for growth and a second R is for reproduction so i want you to notice that there are two r's the order is not necessary um important but just remember that one r is respiration another r is reproduction e is for excretion n is for nutrition and i is for irritability let's crush right in now movement is the process where organism change position or structure now very important for us to know this is that some organisms are able to move their entire body for example us we are able to move from one place to another and organism like us that are able to move insects that are able to fly other animals that can walk or run or crawl those organisms are called motile they are described as being motile they are able to move from place to place while some other organisms are only able to move parts of their body like structures for example the coral polyp they are fixed in one place and only could move based on the movement of the ocean wave trees for example are in fixed places but they're able to move in terms of going towards the light for example going towards water even in the in the form of gravity or towards gravity so those organisms are known as immotile so you have the motile organism and those that are immotile organisms all right so organism can able to move different ways some the entire body and some only parts of their body now very important to understand why organisms move organisms move one to find food two to hide from predators and in some cases to find habitat to compete for resources to mate so they can continue with their population and pre and, pre and preventing extinction from taking place organism also move to complete other daily activities all right for example our heart will beat to ensure that blood is being pumped around the body so we have movement taking place even inside of our body to ensure that we are alive or sustain life respiration which is the process by which organism produce energy from food now organisms respire so that they can effectively carry out other characteristics of life at this point i want to make reference that respiration can be with or without oxygen respiration with oxygen 
is known as aerobic respiration while respiration without oxygen is known as anaerobic respiration so some organism will will reproduce aerobically while some will respire anaerobically but the bottom line is all respiration produces energy growth now growth which is a permanent change or increase in size by producing new cells now point to note a very key note is that non-living things also increase in size but it is not known as growth it is called expansion because in some cases non-living thing that expand can be reversed back to their original size all right so there's a difference between growth and expansion growth must must include the production of new cells there must be new cells produced once you talk about growth please note this is that in single cellular organism we're talking about organism like bacteria and some fungi like yeast for example the cells only the cells they only slightly increase in size and then these cells will divide now the division of cell just to make a note right here the division of cell in my mic in microorganisms or single cellular organisms is for reproduction they reproduce in by splitting their cells but before they can reproduce their cells must grow all right you will not see the obvious change in the size of a cell by just looking you really have to look at a very powerful microscope to see that increase in the cell all right but single cell organism they grow differently by either producing the cell parts or expansion of cell parts all right but it's considered growth because the cell will eventually make new cells all right now and next thing to point out that i want to touch right here is an example of us human being we start from two single cells which is a sperm and a egg and an egg cell they come together fuse the nuclei will fuse and form what they call a zygote the zygote develops into an embryo where it produces much more cells so from these two single cells which is sperm and eggs they join together form a single cell called a zygote then the zygote develops into an embryo where it produces more cell eventually that zyg that embryo form into a fetus which is much more cells being produced then you get a newborn child a toddler and then it moves into teenage and then in into adulthood and each of these stage must include the production of new cell the growth in living thing must include the production of new cells okay folks now reproduction reproduction is a process by which organism make copies of themselves or simply produce offspring now this can be done two ways it can be done sexually where gametes are fused or it can be done asexually without the involvement without any form of involvement of gametes all right at the later lessons we'll get into these type of um, reproduction we'll talk about the examples of and so on so look out for future lessons where we we'll discuss those now all living things try to reproduce to ensure that they do not going go extinct if an organism stop reproducing it has a great chance of becoming extinct excretion now excretion is a process by which organisms remove 
metabolic waste, which are chemical waste or waste from chemical reaction in the body. And some of these chemical reaction is, or one of this chemical reaction, in fact, is respiration. When we respire, we produce carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide is a waste. And we must remove that carbon dioxide from our body. And so we remove carbon dioxide by exhalation. Another chemical waste that we produce is urea. And we remove urea from our body in the form of urine and sweat. All right? So it's always removal of chemical waste. Now, nutrition. Now, nutrition is a process of feeding or obtaining nutrients. Okay? Now, point to note again is that organism obtain their nutrients from food. Now, what is food? Food is anything. Anything that the organism can digest to obtain nutrients. So, food is not something that we can discriminate against. Once the organism can eat that thing to obtain nutrients, it is a food. Now, some organisms, however, make their own food and they are called autotrophs. Now, just to explain a little bit what are autotrophs, we say they, are, they make their own food, we call them cell feeders. But there are two main categories of autotrophs, or two types of autotrophs. One that are called chemotrophs, which produce their food from chemicals. They will get chemicals and, uh, and make their own food. Another category or grouping of autotrophs are called phototrophs. For example, plants, and they obtain light or use light to make their food and we have another group of organism that depend on other organism for food such as us Every, all food that we eat come from another organism if we, if we eat plants if we eat vegetables if we eat fruits is another organism we eat chicken is another organism pork beef mutton is coming from another organism and we depend on other organism for food and so we are called heterotrophs now the final characteristic that we're going to look at is irritability now irritability is also called sensitivity which is a process by which organism react to changes in the environment the changes in the environment is called stimuli all changes in environment they are called stimuli now a stimuli could be in various form St stimuli could be a change in light because we respond to the changes in light it could be a change in the chemical makeup of the environment which will well could be in two forms it could be in the form of smell odor or it could be in the form of taste and so we respond to taste a chemical taste and we resp respond to a chemical odor so for example somebody spraying a perfume you will smell a sweet odor and we may respond to that of actually your body smell it detects it respond to it and of course for pungent situation or pungent substance they also produce a chemical generally hydrogen sulfide that we also respond to and of course we want to close our nose and we want to move away from that location or that spot because it indicates something is decaying we also respond to pressure changes in pressure we also respond to a change in temperatures and we respond <laughs> to pain all right and of course some people even say respond to touch all right because pain touch temperature we respond to all of that all right so this is the end of the lesson and at this point i implore you to feel free to continue learning science with mr knight and of course at your liberty you could just subscribe 
so in the future you'll get quick notification about new and upcoming videos so keep watching keep learning thank you for being here and see you again in the next lesson